Welcome, and today we are going to go over the section 4-1 notes on classifying triangles. So it's important to remember that when we classify triangles, there are three, or sorry, two types of classifications that each have three sections with them. So when we're classifying them by their side lengths, the length of the sides of the triangle, you have scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. So a scalene triangle is a triangle where all three sides have different measurements. So every side is gonna be a different number. So there's a little space here for you to go ahead and draw a picture of what this might look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch something maybe that looks like this, and we'll put some numbers here. Let's say this was 11, maybe this was three, and this was 13 units long. So here we can see that all three sides have a different measure, making it a scalene triangle. Isosceles, this time we have two that are the same, two sides. And I kind of remember this because there's two S's right here to help us kind of keep track of that. So we have two equal sides, or what we'll say in geometry is it has two congruent sides. Remember, congruent is just our way of saying when something has the same measure in math. So two congruent sides. Two of the sides are exactly the same. So I'm gonna draw a picture maybe that looks like this. Again, we could put some numbers here. Maybe we'll call this four, four, and this could be seven. One of the other things you're gonna see us do is when something is congruent, we're gonna put a little tick mark here and here. Since they each have one mark, that's our way of representing those two things have to be equal to each other. Maybe over here we could further emphasize this by going, here's one mark, this one's two marks because they're different, and this one's three marks because it's totally different from all three of them. That way we can see that none of those are the same measurement because they have different amounts of tick marks on them. But because these each have one, they have to be the same. And the last one is equilateral, and that's when all three sides are congruent. So if you have a triangle in which all three sides come out to have the same measurement, so maybe we'll call this like um, three, three, and three. Since all three sides have the measure of three, we know that all three sides are equal, and when that happens, we have what's called an equilateral triangle. We have an extra name for that that you'll sometimes see pop up. Sometimes they'll call them equiangular. Essentially saying that if you have all three sides equal, you also have to have three equal angles. So when you go to classify your triangles, you always have to choose one of those words, scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. That's your first answer. But they're going to come in two answers because you also have to choose if they're acute, obtuse, or right. So an acute triangle is a triangle that has all angles that are less than 90 degrees. So it's gonna usually be kind of a small looking triangle, maybe something like that. All the angles are smaller than 90, they're little tiny angles. And we're gonna put something else down here, so make sure you leave some space. In fact, let's just do this right now. A squared blank, A squared plus B squared. Over here we're gonna put the same thing, C squared blank, A squared plus B squared, and C squared blank, A squared plus B squared. We'll come back to that in just a second. All right, obtuse and right. Well, if you have an obtuse triangle, that just means one angle, just one, doesn't have to be all of them, just one of the angles. If one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees, you have an obtuse triangle. So just one angle is bigger than 90, so maybe it looks something like this. That's bigger than 90 degrees. And so something like that might represent an obtuse triangle. And last is a right triangle, and that's when exactly one angle is 90 degrees. Not less than, not greater than, but it is 90 degrees. And a right triangle is gonna look something like that. And I'm gonna put a little box here. When that, you see that little box, that's how we know it means right angle. So you should always look for that little box to be there. So let's talk about this C squared, A squared plus B squared thing. What we learned, or, or maybe some of you haven't learned it yet, but we're gonna do it this year, but here's your first introduction to it, is anytime you have a right triangle, A squared plus B squared always has to be 
equal to c squared, where c squared always has to be the largest side. And that might be an important little note to make right here. C is always, always the largest side. So make sure you're plugging C in correctly. C has to be the largest side. Well, when it's a right triangle, C squared will be equal to A squared plus B squared. But if it's an acute triangle, C squared ends up being smaller than A squared plus B squared or less than A squared plus B squared. And in an obtuse triangle, C squared is greater than a squared plus b squared. So this is gonna help us in a few minutes to determine whether or not our angles are acute, obtuse, or right angles. So let's take a look at objective one here. Objective one gave us six pictures and it said identify and classify each triangle by its given side length and its angle measures. So we've gotta make sure that we put two answers. One answer from this angle column or row and then a answer from the sides row. So I'm going to start by looking at the angles. I always start with angles first. I noticed that 60 degrees is less than 90, so that's acute. 70 degrees is less than 90, that's acute. And 50 degrees is less than 90, that's acute. Since all three of those angles are acute, I know this triangle is going to be an acute triangle. The other thing I noticed is that this is 10 feet, this is 12.3 feet, this is 11.3 feet. They're all different. When all three sides are different, it's scalene. So an acute scalene triangle. Taking a look at this one, again, I've got three acute angles, 60, 60, and 60. All three of those numbers are less than 90, so I know this is an acute triangle. And there's something a little bit weird here. Notice that all three angles are the same. If that happens, when all three angles are the same, it means that all three sides are also the same. So this represents an equilateral triangle. That's why it has that extra name, equiangular. If all three sides are the same, then all three angles have to be the same, and vice versa. If all three angles are the same, then all three sides have to be the same. All right, the next one, we got this picture here. It doesn't really give us a lot to look at, but if I put the corner of a sheet of paper right here, I can clearly see that angle is bigger than 90 because it's bigger than the corner of my paper. So it's definitely an obtuse angle because it's bigger than 90. So we're gonna start with that, it's obtuse. And then I see that there is a congruent pair, right? This piece is congruent to this piece. So there are two congruent sides, which means it's gonna be an obtuse isosceles triangle. Hopefully you're starting to kind of pick up it here. Maybe take a second now, pause the video, and try and answer those three questions and see if you can come up with the answers for those. Go ahead and pause it right here. And if you take a look there, those are the three answers that I came up with. In both D and E, I noticed this right angle right here. As soon as you see that right angle, the first word you know you're gonna write is right. Over in part F, I noticed this angle over here is bigger than 90, so I put obtuse. And then, in part D, all three angle measures were different, so I said scalene. In E, there were two sides that are the same, so I called that isosceles. And over here, scalene, all three were different. It wasn't marked, but I could see very clearly from the picture that they were all different, and it didn't tell me they're equal. So if it doesn't tell you they're equal, you have to assume that they are not equal or not congruent. So that's what I went with was scalene because they all were different. All right, objective two. Moving in a little bit this time, now it's giving us the side lengths and saying if they're given, now classify it by both its side lengths and its angle measures. This is gonna add an extra step in. It's gonna have to do with that C squared blank A squared plus B squared thing. So in this example, I'm gonna put C squared, leave a space and put A squared plus B squared. And we're gonna fill this in. What is important is that C has to be the biggest number. We wrote that up top. We're gonna make sure we do that here. Out of eight, eight, and eight, well, the biggest number's eight. This one's kind of easy because they're all eight. So we're gonna put eight here. And then this eight and this eight are gonna go in for A and B. And we're gonna go ahead and solve that. Eight squared gives us 64, 64 plus 64. And when I add those 64s together here, 64 plus 64 gives us 128. So filling this in, I know that I'm going to need a less than sign right there. 64 is smaller than 128. So my final answer is that because it's less than, it's going to be an acute triangle. Kind of makes sense. Less than, small angles, acute. But you can look right here. C squared is less than means it is 
acute. That's what I'm doing right there. So it's acute, and then I look up here at the sides. Eight, eight, and eight, is that scalene, isosceles, or equilateral? Well, since all three are the same, this is gonna be an acute equilateral triangle. Taking a look at part B, same idea, but this time we have some different numbers. They're not all the same. So for C, we have to put the biggest number in. So out of six, 12, and six, 12 is the biggest, so this is gonna be 12 squared. And then I've got six and six. It doesn't matter what order A and B go in. If they are different, just plug them in. Just make sure C is the biggest. I've got 144 for 12 squared. Over here I got six squared, which is 36, plus another six squared, which is another 36. And I've got 144 and 72. 36 plus 36 is 72. I know this problem is gonna flip it up and now it's gonna be a greater than sign. Greater than represents an obtuse triangle. And again, take a look up here. I've got a six and a six. There are two equal sides. When that happens, when two sides are equal, we know it is an isosceles triangle. All right, coming on over here, C squared, blank, A squared plus B squared. Of those numbers, the 13 is the biggest, so put 13 in for C. And again, the order for the other two doesn't matter. We just care about C being the biggest. 13 multiplied by 13 gives us 169. 6 times 6 is 36, and 11 times 11 is 121. And when I add these together, that's 157. So it looks like, yet again, the first number is bigger than the second number. It's greater than 157. So greater than represents big angles, so obtuse angles. And again, if you look up here at your measurements, none of them are the same this time, so we use scalene because none of them are equal. All right, coming down to D, E, and F. Notice that E and F step up the game a little bit. Let's get through D first, and then we can look at those little more challenging ones. C squared, blank, A squared plus B squared. I got my nine for C, seven and seven for A and B. And we get 81 uh, is blank to 49 and 49. And we know that when we add 49 and 49 together, we get 98. So 81 has to be less than, I did that with the wrong color, less than 98. Less than represents, you know it, acute angles. And again, two are the same here. One, two. So it's going to be an isosceles triangle. Like I said, the next one steps it up a little bit, makes it a little bit more challenging, but it's really not too much more challenging. I'm still following the same process. C squared blank, A squared plus B squared. Out of nine square roots of three, and that's where things might get a little bit tricky, nine and 18, 18 is definitely the biggest number. So 18 squared, and then the other ones are gonna go in nine squared plus nine square roots of three squared. So my 18 squared, Pull that out on my notes real quick. 18 squared is gonna give us um, 324 blank. Nine squared is 81. And what happens is when you square something with a radical, we're gonna start with this nine on the outside. Nine squared is 81. But the square root of three squared, well, square root of three gets canceled out by squaring. The square root and the square cancel each other in this case. So this becomes 81 multiplied by three. In other words, you're doing nine squared and then take that number and multiply it by the number inside. So I have 324 is blank to 81 plus 243. And if I add those two things together, 81 plus 243 gives us 324. Huh, they are equal this time. So because they're equal, we know it's a right triangle. Equal always means right. Less than is acute, greater than is obtuse. Equal is right. And then I look up my sides, nine squared to three, nine and 18. None of those are close. I mean, nine and nine squared to three kind of look the same. They both have nines, but remember this has a square to three, so it's not the same. So all three are different, so it's a right scalene. 
and the home stretch here. We got this part F, five squared is two, five squared is two, and 10. So C squared, A squared plus B squared. I'm gonna put the 10 over here for C squared because it's the biggest number. And then I have five squared to two squared plus five squared to two squared. 10 squared is 100. Five squared is 25. And then multiplied by the two inside the square root. Same thing over here, five times five is 25. Square root of two squared, the square roots cancel and I just have a two left over. So I have 100 is blank to 50 plus 50. I can see what's about to happen here. 100 and then 50 plus 50 is also 100. So this is gonna be another situation where they're equal, which causes this to be a right triangle. And then five squared is two and five squared is two and 10. Well, these two numbers are exactly the same. So it is a right isosceles triangle. So moving our way onto the back here, These ones tend to be a little bit more tedious, so we're gonna take a, a little bit of time. We're gonna do two of the examples, and the last two will be for you to try on your own. So this is classify the triangle by its side lengths and its measures, angle measures, but they only gave us points this time. So in order to do this, we have to find the distance. Let me put that right here. Distance. You gotta use the distance formula to get your answer. So I need to find three distances because triangles have three sides. So the distance from A to B, B to C, and C back onto A. So I'm gonna start with A to B. Remember the way we do distance is we subtract the X's, square it, subtract the Y's, square it, and then add them together in square root. So five minus negative six. Be careful with those negatives. Squared, five minus negative six squared, and then plus negative three minus positive eight squared. And we'll work this out. I know that when I do minus negative six, this is gonna become a plus six. Minus eight is gonna stay minus eight. So I got five plus six, which is 11 squared. Negative three minus eight, which is negative 11 squared. Which doesn't really matter, because when I square those numbers, 11 squared to 121, negative 11 squared is also positive 121, because the negative is gonna get squared out. They should always go away. Every negative should be gone at the end. So overall, this becomes the square root of 242. And for, in fact, for this answer, that's exactly what I'm putting in this blank. I'm not gonna overcomplicate it. I don't need to pull out the decimal and, or the calculator and get the decimal because it's not gonna help us at the end. It's actually more useful to leave it in that form. All right, after A to B, now we gotta go B to C. So B, C says we wanna take negative six and subtract negative five squared and then eight, subtract negative two squared. And let's work through this. So I'm gonna start by changing my signs. Minus negative five becomes plus five. Minus negative two becomes plus two. Negative six plus five is negative one squared. Eight plus two is 10 squared. I get one plus 100. 100, which is the square root of 101. I'm gonna put that down here inside length number two. All right, we're almost there. We got one more. We did A to B, we did B to C. Now we're gonna go C back around to A. So C, A. So negative five minus five. And now the order you do these in don't matter. If you did yours as A to B, you get the same answer. So it's okay. Plus, negative two minus negative three squared. <clears throat> so again, when I'm looking here, all I have is one double negative to switch to a positive, and now we're in good shape. This is negative five and negative five, that's negative 10 squared. Plus negative two plus three is one squared. And these numbers should look familiar because you just did 10 squared and one squared over here. You're gonna get the same answer, so you could quickly jump down and say the answer is square root of 101. I'm gonna write it out just so we can see it, but in the future, I would definitely skip this step because we know where we're at, we know what we did, we know we have the right answer, so we're good to go. So taking a look at this, the first thing we can classify by sides really easily, but you have to first classify by angles just like we did in objective two. 
So C squared is blank to A squared plus B squared. And something really nice is gonna happen here. Remember, C has to be the biggest number. So the biggest number here is the square root of 242. 242. But I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna square it. And then I can put in my uh, square root of 101 squared plus my other square root of 101 squared. Well, what's gonna happen if you square root something and then square it? The square roots are just gonna cancel each other out with those squareds. So you don't even need to worry about writing all that. It's just 242, the biggest number, is blank to the sum of the two smaller numbers, 101 plus 101. So 242 and 202, 242 is bigger. So I know that bigger and greater means an obtuse triangle. And here, two of my numbers are the same. Those two are the same, so it's going to be an obtuse isosceles triangle. All right, let me go ahead and push this up. We're gonna do one more example together, and then the last two are for you to try and see how you do. So I've got D, E, and F. We're gonna go ahead and find the distance here. So let's start with D to E. So the square root of D to E, negative 11 minus negative one squared. And then my Y is four and 12, so we're gonna have four minus 12 squared. All right, negative 11 minus negative one becomes negative 11 plus one. So I have the square root of negative 11 plus one is negative 10 squared. Four minus 12 is gonna be negative eight squared. Remember the important thing here is when you square these, these negatives should always go away. Even though they both have negatives, my final answer is gonna be positive 100 and positive 64. These two numbers should always be positive numbers because when you square them, the negative goes away. And we get the square root of 164. That's answer choice one. For part two, we're gonna do E to F. So in this case, E and F, we're gonna have negative one and 11 for our X's, so negative one minus 11 squared. And then 12 minus negative two squared. All right, again, there's only one minus here, so I don't have to worry about it, but this double minus, I'm gonna make a plus so I don't make those mistakes. Negative one, negative 11 is negative 12 squared. 12 and two is 14 squared. And that is gonna end up giving me 144 plus 196. 12 squared is 144, 14 times 14 is 196. You probably need a calculator to do that, that's okay. And I add that together and I get 340 under the square root, and we'll leave it like that, square root of 340. We got one more part here, we did D to E, E to F, now we gotta do F, back to the beginning, back to D. Again, we should always have three questions here when we're done. So we've got the square root of 11 minus negative 11 squared, and then do the y's, negative two minus four. Again, this right here is gonna switch to a plus sign, and now I have the square root of 22 squared plus negative six squared and those are gonna be some really big numbers. Like I said, definitely need a calculator for some of these. 484 plus 36, which would all add together to give us 520 as my final side length. So the first thing I see is all three of these side lengths are different, so I know it's going to be a scalene triangle. So let me put that, scalene. But we need to figure out what happens when we put those into their Pythagorean inequalities. So C squared has to be the biggest, so in this case it's gonna be the 520 and then a squared plus b squared. Like I said, once you realize that the squares and the squares are gonna cancel, you could just drop them. This is just gonna become 520, and then 164 plus 340. Adding that up, I got 504, so I can see that I'm going to have a greater than sign. 
So we now know that this is actually going to be an obtuse scalene triangle. All right, so like I said, I was gonna do those two examples. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video here. You should too. And try C and D yourself. See if you can figure out how to do that and come back in a second and you will have the answers given to you. But go ahead and try that first. All right, and these are the answers that I got for this problem. Obtuse isosceles for both of them. But make sure you pause it, take a look at my work, figure out what happened. I did my distance formula a little bit different right here, only because I was trying to show the class something different to do. If this makes sense, you can use it. But I went back immediately to using the regular distance formula because that's the way we learned how to do it. So you choose what makes sense to you. But uh, yeah, those are your answers. Obtuse isosceles and obtuse isosceles. Let us know if you have any questions. Have a fantastic day.